Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Into the Hive Mind. Um, obviously it's been a while, I keep making excuses every episode, but you know, it's also just, I have a one-year-old now, and it turns out they require a lot of attention. Um, we want to talk about the balanced data slate. I will give you guys a brief update on my activities with Tyranids um, since LVO, which I believe is when my last video was. Uh, so yeah, a whole six month hiatus there, sorry about that. But uh, I have gone to three tournaments since LVO, um, a local Cheyenne one where I actually played Blood Angels, uh, just wanted to try them, went four and one. Uh, I played at the Rocky Mountain Open with a Herofint Bio Titan, which was a lot of fun. Um, I did not do well with that. I played my first round on uh, Joe's War Games live stream. Uh, I did win that one, so if you want to go watch that, uh, check out the Rocky Mountain Open on War Games Live, and I am the very first game. Um, was actually quite a good game, and you can see how I handle the Herofin Bio Titan and the list that I was running. Um, unfortunately, really bad dice luck in a lot of my games, and opponents being able to just one shot the Herofin with random things that shouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, resulted in me going 2, 3, and 1 at that 6 round event. So definitely not my greatest showing, but I did bring a hero fit, so I was kind of asking for it. Um, and then other than that, I did go to another, oh, just a local GT in Denver, and I went, uh, or no, I went to the Storm of Silence, sorry. Uh, Storm of Silence up in Spokane, Washington, and I went 4 and 1 with Tyranids there, and that one was uh, a lot of fun. Um, I was actually very happy with my performance. I finally hopped on the gargoyle train, ran 40 gargoyles. And yeah, turns out everyone's right. They're really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. But doesn't really matter because now this balanced data slate has shook everything up. So what I did previously is kind of irrelevant now. Because now we've got a whole new game. We've got the new Pariah Nexus missions. And we have a new balanced data slate. Um, everything is changing. They're calling it 10.5 and they're doing that for a reason. The entire game has completely shifted. So um, this is a Tyranid channel. We're only talking about Tyranids. If you want to learn about all the rest of the data slate changes, there are plenty of other YouTubers way more qualified than me to talk about it. Um, so go ahead and hop on any other channel. Just type in new balanced data slate, new meta, uh, Pariah Nexus, anything like that, you will find tons of stuff. This is for Tyranids, so we're only talking about what Tyranids gain with all this new stuff. Um, and then I am going to have this just be an overcap like um, video of what Tyranids got. And then I am actually going to follow through with this, guys. I am going to make a video of every single detachment and a list for them because I think they are all viable now. Endless Swarm is the one that I'm going to struggle with because I really have never enjoyed that playstyle. Um, so I'm sorry for those who really like that one. Um, it's not my playstyle. I'm still going to do the video, but I might not be the best at that one. Um, but every other detachment, really excited for. I think they're all. I think all detachments are completely viable, which is fantastic. So after this one, um, I'm going to break it down into nice digestible chunks for you guys. This is the uh, overcap video, and then we will have follow-up videos with every detachment. Um, so that way they're all going to be nice, you know, 20, 30 minute videos and not a single four hour thing that uh, results in less clicks. All right, so anyways, uh, for this overhaul, let's see what the NIDs got. So in this balance data slate change, NIDs got a lot. They finally saw that we were a 43% win rate army that was um, could definitely go 4-1 and one with a good general, but was really struggling to take podiums unless you were John Lennon or Sam Pope. So... <laughs> um, Anyways, uh, what did Tyranids get? First thing that they got, huge change. You get plus one strength to your melee weapons uh, while in Synapse. That is absolutely huge. Um, this turns into plus one to wound a lot more often than you would think. Um, the biggest break points for that includes uh, Gene Stealers, jump from strength four to strength five, where they now become true marine killers instead of having to risk just, you know, 
whiffing on four ups. Four ups are the most uh, random roll you can get. So making that suddenly three ups is just ups that consistency drastically. Um, warriors and Raveners go from strength five to strength six. This normally isn't a massive breakpoint, except for the fact that both of these units are twin linked. And going from five to six means you're wounding uh, tanks on fives, strength uh, T10 tanks that we were used to wound on sixes are now wounding on fives. And with twin linked, this is like, uh, we go from wounding them 30% of the time to 55% of the time. It's a massive difference. Um, again, specifically because these units are twin linked, uh, makes a world of difference. Um, next break point is the Haraspex goes from strength seven to strength eight. Um, obviously this is a huge break point, light vehicles, uh, T4 is suddenly being wounded on twos. Um, and this all matters because the Haraspex has such a high volume of attacks. Um, going from seven to eight makes the Haraspex actually, again, a marine killer, which is really nice. Um, but also it, those occasional, you know, Dread Knights, although we're AP1, so we're probably not really hurting those. But other T8 things, um, the Haraspex can suddenly wound on fours, and that is a really nice buff. Um, the other really big break point, all of our Hive Tyrants, our Norns, our Trigons, they all went from Strength 9 to Strength 10. This is a massive increase because all, most of the mid-sized vehicles and monsters in the game are Toughness 10. We just got plus one to wound against all of that. Um, we also, you know, T5, we now wound on twos. That's not nearly as prevalent in the game, but it certainly exists. Um... So yeah, Strength 9 to Strength 10 is a huge jump. Um, and yeah, Hive Tyrants and Norns all got that, and they have Synapse. Trigons also got it. They're going to be a lot harder to get in Synapse, but when you get there, uh, again, the huge volume of attacks that Trigons have, making all of them that plus one strength is a massive difference. So yeah, plus one to Strength in melee uh, within Synapse. Huge buff. Uh, it really changes the game a lot Tyranids had a massive damage problem specifically against strength 10 and warriors and raveners going to strength 6 and tyrants and norns and trigons going to strength 10 to counteract that is really what we needed. Um, next big change minus one to um, enemy's leadership during the shadows in the warp if they are within synapse. So that is a lot of little conditions um, but ultimately what it means is when we pop shadows in the warp, it can truly be impactful. We now have so many ways to stack minus one leadership up because they do stack. And importantly, uh, one of the new changes to the core rules is leadership is capped at a nine plus. So your leadership cannot be modified to worse than a nine plus. Um, however, tiered rules all say worsen the die roll, not the characteristic. Um, so we have four ways to lower someone's leadership, uh, five if you include the Dirge Heart of Karis in the Nexus Detachment, and that is Death Leaper, which is the only one that specifies worsen the their leadership by one. Uh, all the rest of them say worsen the roll by one. Uh, so it we're never going to get that opponent capped at nine unless they're already nine, which I can't think of a single unit in the game that is leadership nine. There are some eights, Tyranids are a big example, um, which then go to nine with Death Leaper, but all the rest of them, the Neuro Tyrant, the Screamer Killer, the Shadows, um, the, the Synaptic Shadows, and the um, Dirge Heart all worsen the roll by one. Um, so that is not capped, and we could have a Leadership 6 guy suddenly needing to roll a 10 to pass, um, which is incredible. Because you, you can't stack the Screamer Killer with the Shadows and the Warp because those are two totally separate actions. But otherwise, you can stack Death Leaper with the Dirge Heart, with the Neuro Tyrant, with Synapse. Uh, those all stack up to be a minus four test on something that would obviously have to be critically important for the game for you to want to stack it up that much. But it is possible. Um, so yeah, only happens once in the game uh, a... Synapse just having a minus one leadership aura would be very cool and very thematic, but I could also understand it being a little too powerful with all the Battleshock shenanigans we have. Um, but, 
you know, if we're ever hurting and need a bump, I would love that. <laughs> so, um, next up, Crusher Stampede. Uh, they gained two things for this detachment, which is fantastic because Crusher Stampede was certainly the worst detachment that Tyranids had. Um, so now, uh, Crusher Stampede gives, just as a detachment bonus, any monster that is at full health plus two to their OC. Now, this is interesting because a lot of our monsters suddenly become OC like six, which is great. Um, you, they can suddenly steal, one, one monster can steal from a, like a five-man infiltrator squad, um, which is really useful. But all the opponent has to do is deal one wound to your monster to then take that away from you. Um, however, that then triggers the rest of the army special rules where you now get plus one to hit. Um, and then obviously still, if you are below half health, then you get plus one to wound as well. Um, the interesting thing on this is if you take like old one eye with his two carnifexes, um, they all get plus two OC until a carnifex dies, which is a lot harder for the opponent to do than just, you know, chip a wound off. Um, this is... This is really good because you're basically telling your opponent, yeah, do that wound to me. I now hit on twos uh, pretty much across the board because all, most of our monsters hit on threes. So going to hitting on twos actually makes uh, this faction really impactful. Normally the way to play Crusher Stampede beforehand was you stick a monster out front like a Cardifex and they kill the Cardifex. You then auto explode it to do one wound to everyone and give them all plus one to hit. Now you're kind of telling your opponent, hey, you're going to do that wound to me just to take away this OC, um, and then I get the plus one to hit. Obviously, you can still go the self-exploding route as well, but this gives us more incentive to actually use our army special rule. Uh, the other funny thing about it is the Herodin, which has OC zero as aircraft, is suddenly OC two until your opponent shoots it, um, giving it that plus one to hit, um, which I find really funny. Um, unfortunately, being Titanic, it has to be a Titanic character to shoot an action, but if you have, for some reason, nothing to shoot at with a Herodin and it's at full health, it can do actions now, which is just cute. Um, the other change to Crusher Stampede, their stratagem that lets monsters move through uh, walls less than four inches and enemy units now also lets them move through walls greater than four inches, but they have to take a um, roll a d6 and on a one, they become battle shocked. This is incredible. Um, so many things open up because of this. Um, unfortunately, it's not as great as it seems at first glance, but I'm still gonna say it's fantastic. Uh, the reason it's not as great, most of our monsters have gigantic bases and only move eight inches. Um, so if your opponent is doing the one inch away from the wall trick, it's, and you are on the other side of that wall, um, we don't really have the movement to actually clear the, the wall and the one inch gap and the unit and make it where our base still fully fits on the other side without touching them, uh, including the one inch away from that unit because we cannot use this strat in the charge phase. So it makes it a lot more difficult um, and makes it where essentially we kind of have to advance if we actually want to do that. None of our monsters have advanced in charge and we don't have a way of getting it. So it's not as great as it sounds unless you're a flying hive tyrant or a um, like a trigon, something with more than just eight inches of movement. Um, flying hive tyrants specifically, I think this is absolutely incredible. They'd have the round base. They now, uh, their wings can no longer be shot for line of sight because they've changed that where um, if you are shooting at a monster or vehicle behind a ruin that you are now have to measure to the base for obscuring, which makes Flyrance actually able to hide. And I love that. Um, so in Crusher Stampede, I actually think Flyrance are incredible because they can just hide behind a ruin wall and then actually use this strat to fly 12 inches through that wall over the opponent, charge them, and it's actually good now, especially because they're now strength 10. Um, so I think that's great. The other one being Trigons. Uh, Trigons get to use both of these new rules with um, Crusher Stampede. So Trigons could show up three away, and they are now OC6. So that is a very real rapid ingress 
um, or just show up and steal an objective, a primary objective away from your opponent. Um, and same thing, you just show up right behind a wall, just barely on an objective where they, where you can't be seen. And now you don't have to go all the way around the building and basically have to make a choice between, do I want to just sit here all game long on an objective and not be seen and shot? Or do I want to be able to actually attack with my Trigon? Uh, you now can have both. You can show up and not be shot. And then when you're ready to go charge something, spend the CP, walk through that wall that you've been hiding behind all game and go and kill stuff. Um, but yeah, Trigons with OC6 showing up behind a wall three inches away from the enemy, I think is going to be a very real uh, tool in Crusher Stampede. And I'm actually really excited to try it. All right. Um, so that is... The Crusher Stampede, next up with the Walking Hive Tyrant's Onslaught aura, gained lethal hits in addition to Assault. Um, this is awesome. The Hive, hive Tyrants are overcosted. just going to say it. Um, over 200 points for a slight stratagem buff ability is good, but they are not durable enough to justify their price point. Um, the Walking Hive Tyrant with that six inch aura basically wants to sit behind a wall so it can't be shot. And now he has an aura of lethal hits in addition to assault. This is incredible because it makes it where invasion fleet is no longer the go-to detachment. You can basically play in any detachment and your exocrines can still have lethal hits, um, which is kind of how Tyranids have, you know, it was something that Tyranids kind of had to do in order to play against tank armies, because uh, again, we were capped at like strength eight or strength 10, but only AP two giving the opponent cover. We really struggled with tanks. Um, and invasion fleet lethal hits was kind of the way that we handled that. And now we can do it in other detachments. We just have to pay the walking hive tyrant tax, which is a lot, but the option is there. And I think this is phenomenal. Um, the other thing that's kind of funny, like this just goes with Termagants really well as uh, in addition, because your strength three mass shots suddenly have it lethal hits. They're AP zero, but you are going to make your opponent take a lot of saves. Um, and this kind of just makes the Termagon even more irrelevant, which we'll get to when we talk in the point changes. But yeah, this is an incredible boost and specifically for um, Exocrines, Maliceptors, already are great guy, uh, great models, now just can be taken in other detachments than Invasion Fleet and do the same thing. Um, next up, we have the Neurolictor, Broodlord, and Parasite all gained Synapse. This is great from just a ease of use standpoint. These models all have big brains and all your opponents basically assume they had Synapse all the time anyways, and it was getting tiresome explaining to your opponent that no, these brain bugs don't have synapse, but these brain bugs do. They all have synapse now. Yay. Um, but also, mechanically, uh, this is a huge buff because uh, now they trigger that minus one leadership it, during the shadows turn. They also trigger the plus one strength in melee. That is incredible. Um, Neurolictors giving... Um, the Neurolictors, like, they like the plus one strength, um, but they really like the minus one leadership because again, that's their whole thing. Um, they really like making your opponent take battle shock checks. So they are probably next to the guys that you really want to have fail um, during shadows turn. So if you know you're gonna pop shadows in your opponent's next command phase, you just run the neuro lifter forward. And now they'll also have a minus one leadership on uh, during that shadows turn. And that can be really impactful. The Broodlord and Parasite love the plus one strength in melee. Broodlord, because obviously he will be joined to Gene Stealers, making them strength five, makes them relevant again, um, which I love. And then the Parasite is just a super mobile loan op with Synapse. So if you need Synapse somewhere on the board, Parasite is now your guy, um, which is what he was in ninth, and that was great. We're back to this in 10th, and yeah, just really mobile Synapse. Um, also combos super well with the Dirge Heart of Karas in the Synaptic Nexus detachment. Put that on the Parasite. That is the go-to guy for that, um, because now he runs forward, has an aura of not minus one leadership, and when you pop the Shadow turn, he is also Synapse. So now he basically has a six-inch aura of minus two leadership during the Shadow turn. 
um, in addition to getting the plus one strength, which like does put him to strength six, which is not irrelevant. He's now wounding uh, T3 guys on twos, which is his target of choice. Um, yeah. Uh, Broodlord and the Parasite also gain Shadow in the Warp, which will almost never come up, but if every other Shadow in the Warp model on your army is dead, you now have a few other guys to enable you to still pop the Shadows. Um, okay, next we have the Moloch, Ravener, and Trigon. All the Snaky Boys gained the Invader keyword. This is huge. <laughs> um, the, uh, sorry, totally blank there. But the that detachment, the don't know why I'm blanking on it, but the speedy Vanguard invasion, think, there we go, uh, the Vanguard keyword, not the invader keyword, they gained the Vanguard keyword and the uh, that detachment uh, did get a couple of stealth nerfs, um, specifically you can no longer redeploy after knowing who goes first, that was just a core game change rule, um, no army gets that anymore, and um, we lost something else that I can't think of at the moment, but it was kind of minor. Um, oh, the uh, you, loan op strat can no longer be... Uh, all loan op strats that make you loan op for a CP are now 18 inches instead of 12. That does not impact the second half of our rule that says if we are already loan op, change it to 6. Because it specifies that a stratagem that makes you go to 12 instead makes you go to 18. Ours doesn't make us go to 12, ours makes us go to 6, so it still works as going to 6 for our guys that are already loan up. Um, but anyways, that was a nerf, again, core rule nerf that hit this detachment, but they made up for it by giving us Molochs, Raveners, and Trigons, which is huge. Uh, Raveners and Trigons with Advance and Charge is incredible, um, in addition to being able to just have these units fall back with the strat if the opponent gets within nine of them, um, makes them a lot less likely to be charged. And Molochs, biggest winners of this, they can now have two Molochs show up turn one because they basically, all three of these units now get access to all of the stratagems in this detachment. So yeah, you can spend one CP, have two Molochs show up turn one and start doing those mortal wounds. And then if your opponent can't deal with that at the end of their turn, you can put those back in reserve come back in turn two, do it again, come back in turn three, do it again. Um, as long as you have the CP, they're not tied up in combat. And if your opponent just leaves the Molochs alone, you just get to mortal them infinitely, which is incredible. Um, and that's exactly what Molochs needed to be viable. So I'm happy to see these guys on the table again. Um, yeah, that it's... Snake Boys is actually a real list right now. It is a different way to play the Vanguard Invasion Fleet. And I think it's totally viable. Um, all right, next up, the Exocrine. Its gun went from Strength 8 to Strength 9. This is not a huge breakpoint, but it is an important breakpoint specifically for the Exocrine and Tyranids. Again, we have struggled to crack vehicles. Sadly, this means even like a Rhino, a truck... We were struggling to kill those. The Exocrine growing to strength 9 makes this much more likely that when we shoot, we can kill a dedicated transport. Um, we desperately need this, because we need the transports to be dead so we can get to the you know juicy stuff on the inside. Um, rhinos and trucks just meant that Tyranids lost before this. Um, we still, as not a guarantee, but it's a massive help for the Exocrine to now be able to kill dedicated transports, and Tyranids desperately needed that. So that's why this uh, breakpoint, which would normally be kind of irrelevant, is actually really important. Uh, the other stat change that Tyranids got, I love that they're doing stat changes, by the way. I'm glad that they realize this is a, another lever they can use to balance the game, and that not everything is set in stone for the three years that the edition is out. So that's great. Um, but anyways, the Tyran effects... Uh, so Rupture Cannon went to D6 plus 6 damage instead of 2D6. Uh, this is obviously a really big buff where suddenly our average roll from before is now our floor. And so that's obviously just a massive buff. And our average roll went from 7 damage to 10 damage. That's a huge buff. Um, no, no doubt about it. We now basically will kill something like a Rhino on a 4-up. 
um, if we get one shot through, and that's incredible. Tyranids desperately need that. Um, the Tyranifex is still a two-shot gun with no rerolls. So if your opponent has an invuln, you kind of just do nothing most of the time. But when that uh, one shot goes through, it will really hurt uh, rather than risking, hey, it finally went through and I rolled a three on damage. Uh, we no longer have to worry about that. So that is a massive buff. I do think rupture cannons are takeable now. Um, but be warned, again, it is a two shot gun that hits on threes with no rerolls. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Synaptic Nexus can give you reroll ones to hit and wound, but that's if you're within 24 inches, and kind of the advantage of the Rupture Cannon is it's a 48-inch gun. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do in order to do the damage. So, anyways, that is the change to the Tyran effects, and that is what Tyranids got in the Balanced Data Slate. Um, so now moving on to points, Tyranids barely got touched in points, it was basically negligible. Um, Neurolictors did go up to 90 points, so they are definitely very expensive now, especially compared to the 60 that they were when the Codex came out. <laughs> um, they were definitely too cheap there. Now being at 90, um, is, you, you definitely feel it when you take two of them. I still think taking two of them is absolutely what you want to do. Them gaining Synapse is huge. Um, it makes them worth the, the... 10 point price increase that they just got. They are more expensive than Death Leaper now. I still think two Neurolictors and Death Leaper probably make every list. Um, just having a lone op with a four up invuln and stealth and infiltrate is just really, really good um, for missions in addition to just being able to tie up enemies. Um, yeah. Other point changes the Turbagon went down 20 points, but it's still useless. The Turbagon has been bad pretty much this entire edition. The only time I would ever use it is if I was playing Endless Swarm, which as I talked about, I never really did. Um, but if you're playing Endless Swarm, or essentially you want to bring a Turbagon if you're taking at least 60 Turbagons. I think any less than that, the Turbagon was absolutely not worth it. Even at 60 Turbagons, I still don't know if it's worth it because you could just take 20 more Turbagons for the same price point. Um, actually you could take 30 more for the same price point and you still can. It's now 170. That's basically the price of 30 Termagants, but, uh, it's now even more useless because the whole reason you would do that. Yeah. The regen ability was nice, but, uh, you were really doing it to give all of these Termagants lethal hits. You can now do the same thing with a walking hive tyrant and it gives the lethal hits to the rest of your army as well. And it gives assault. So, and it gives the CP buff. Um, I think you just take a Walking Hive Tyrant over a Turbagon every single time, even in Endless Swarm now. So, yeah, Turbagon going down 20 points basically is nothing. Um, other than that, Mucolids went down 20 points a model because they were at a hilarious 50 points per model for a self-destructing OC0 guy, which I found hilarious. Uh, he's now 30. Still hilarious. Um, I, I think at 20 you might consider doing them, but even then, that was 20 in 9th edition when they did D6 mortals when they exploded. They still only do D3, so I think maybe 15 points a model, 10 points a model. Doesn't matter. Mucolids are irrelevant, um, but they went down on points. Biovore also went down 75 points to 50. However, the spore mines it creates can no longer do actions. Um, I still think a Biovore is worth it if you have 50 points you can fit in your list. This is where you should put it. Um, he is kind of the first guy that I cut out of every list now, but I still think um, the Spore Mines can do three of the 18 secondaries still. They can still get behind, they can still get engaged, and they can still get in area denial. Um, and you can still do the movement block shenanigans. Um, there is a lot of advance and charge in the game that's really popular right now. And with correct spore mine placement, you can stop the opponent from being able to do that, um, which is a very valuable tool. So I still think having a Biovore is, use, uh, is useful, especially because Tyranids need something to sit on their backfield home objective. Um, we are a very aggressive midfield army, so having something that wants to sit on that backfield um, is actually worth having. Um, but yeah, and 50 points is not... A huge investment. Um, okay, finally, so that's it. That's all we got for point changes. Um, 
core rule changes that impacted us, like I said, uh, the Vanguard Invasion Fleet had a couple stealth nerfs. Um, but other core rule changes. Swarm Lord now has a 12-inch aura of plus one CP. This is incredible. Uh, it turns off so many melee armies. Basically, you just stick Swarm Lord with some Tyrant Guard, maybe to um, he either sits behind a wall in the middle of the battlefield, or you give him six Tyrant Guard and just walk him up the center and say, deal with this because all of your strats basically cost an additional CP. Um, yeah, this is just absolutely incredible. Swarm Lord is the most durable guy with this ability now. And uh, it if you stick him in the center of the table, it really is a massive aura. Um, and especially melee armies, like interrupting, uh, heroic intervention goes back to two CP with him and most of their, you know, armor of contempt. If Swarmlord goes up with his piddly AP2 melee weapons, uh, at least they're probably not going to do armor of contempt because that's now two CP against him. Um, so yeah, Swarmlord getting that 12 inch aura, um, in addition to the points decrease he got in the last balanced data slate, I think Swarmlord is actually worth taking now at 240. Um, and then next core rule change, OC0 not allowing actions. Obviously that hurts Tyranids a ton. Rippers and Spore Mines are essentially useless. Um, now, again, the Spore Mines with the advance and charge thing is kind of nice, but Rippers really are kind of useless which actually they, a single Ripper base went up five points. Uh, they said that they were going to change the points to OC zero models and they did. Rippers went up five points. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously that hurts us a lot, but we did get a lot of tools to go around it. And I do think we got a definitive net buff. Um, the final impactful core rule change Tank Shock and Grenades got nerfed. We didn't have access to that, so those getting nerfed is just a nerf to everyone else, and we like that. So um, it feels bad that we can't Tank Shock. I don't know why they won't allow monsters to do it, especially now that it's a change to toughness values. We have a lot of tough monsters that run you over, just like a tank does, but whatever. That's their core design decision, um, and nerfing those rules is just a net benefit to us. So yeah, um, that is the overall changes that Tyranids got, and I will start making these videos about each detachment type. But Tyranids, we're in a good spot now. I do think we are actually an A-tier army with this. Um, we, do, we are going to struggle to score secondaries now with these changes, but we can actually play the game that everyone else is playing rather than trying to survive and have Spore Mines basically keep us in the game in the meanwhile. Um, which is what we were doing before. So I'm uh, very excited. I think Tyranids are in a great spot and very happy with this update. Thank you all for watching. Start watching the uh, army videos, which I'm going to start filming right now. Thanks.